Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining me for today's Spotlight Conversation. Today, we're going to explore the range of technologies that we refer to at Microsoft as the Power Platform. Power Apps, Power BI, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, and Power Pages. Now, that's what they say is a lot of power. The Power Platform is Microsoft's platform for building no-code, low-code applications and data visualizations, and we often refer to users of these tools as, quote, citizen developers or citizen data scientists, since they sometimes, sometimes lack a formal background in software engineering or data science. Today, I have one of our resident citizen developers, Steve Carson, who also happens to be a member of my team. Steve has been using the Power Platform for several years now to build solutions that power critical business processes for Microsoft Digital. Steve, welcome to the show. Hi, good to be here. Awesome. So, hey, you've been building solutions using the Power Platform for a few years now. How did you get started uh, with the Power Platform and what's, what inspired you to start building applications as a citizen developer? That's a good question. There was never really one particular instance where I basically wanted to get into Power Platform, there was a number of sort of business problems that were ongoing that just, it was convenient to sort of solve those using Power Platform. And a couple of examples are, one, we had an Excel spreadsheet uh, around audience management and it got traction and more and more people got interested in this spreadsheet over time. And then this created an ongoing issue in that the people that wanted to interact all had different perspectives. They wanted something slightly differently. So as they came on board, they started playing around with the spreadsheet in line with what they wanted to get out of it and not being entirely mindful of the impact on other people. So Power Platform gave us an opportunity to refine that and fine-tune the permissions around that spreadsheet so we could control the ability of the system to give them what they needed without adversely impacting others. And another solution was really around giving people the ability to interact with some role persona data and update that in an efficient way because there was some data that was quantitative in nature and was constantly changing. And we could automate that and take that heavy lift away from people so they could focus on more qualitative elements where they could add additional context and value to that quantitative data. So it was more efficient, less time consuming for the users, and it was a win-win in effect. That's awesome. It, well, and you know, Excel, as powerful as it is, it's not exactly the best platform for collaborative uh, data sharing, data manipulation, data visualization. So that's that's a terrific example. So power apps are often described as no code or low code solutions, but that doesn't mean that they don't require some technical expertise. What were some of the skills that you needed to build to effectively harness the platform? And where did you go to build those skills? There's essentially four skills that I think are essential to being a good citizen developer. The first of those, identifying and defining a problem, an opportunity, and what the solution could be. And when you're doing that, wearing a huge variety of different hats. So you can actually look at that problem or opportunity not only from your perspective, but from the perspective of all the relevant users and stakeholders involved. The second one is about developing a vision and thinking ahead in terms of that vision and what needs to happen, both in terms of what could be, in terms of a then solution and how that would look, and then bringing all the different components together across the Power Platform suite and how they all connect in terms of realizing that vision. The third skill will be around communicating the vision, explaining the vision and the solution that arises from it, and to some extent, actually negotiating with people because there's always a bit of give and take in terms of requirements and solutions, particularly where you've got lots of uh, stakeholders with different uh, potentially conflicting needs. And then the fourth skill is actually a technical skill, and that's around data modeling and transforming data. So. Uh, I've had to learn, you know, data modeling techniques, and I know about star schemas and snowflake schemas. It's always good to read up about those. And it's also good to learn about how to transform data, particularly using DAX within the Power Platform Suite. In terms of those four skills, there's lots of resources available where you can um, get help and upskill on those. 
The first one would be LinkedIn Learning. The second one would be the Microsoft Community Forums, where people ask questions and people give responses on how do I do this? It could be something as simple as how do I do this query in DAX? The third one is YouTube videos. Again, it's like the community, but it's a, a lot more interactive and people can actually show what they're doing on screen. So that's a hugely powerful tool as well. And the fourth one is your peers. Make sure you've got access to a peer network because they'll be a huge help in terms of helping you solve problems. Don't do it alone. Reach out to people. Uh, great tips. And I think it's fascinating that, you know, of those four tips that you just shared, most of them are those softer communications types of skills. So tell our audience a little bit about one of the solutions that you've built. How did the Power Platform make it possible to deliver, you know, a really useful solution uh, in a minimal amount of time? So here I'll, I'll talk about a solution that's based around collecting and managing user and stakeholder feedback. And different elements of the Power Platform uh, suite actually contributed to developing a great solution. First of all, there's the Dataverse, and this contributed in terms of providing a, a great ability to bring in existing data from around the organization and bring it into one location where you can actually access it and start to leverage it. The second one is Power Apps, where you can start to add a UI, build on the, the information you've got in the Dataverse, add forms and views where people can interact with the data that's already there, but add value by adding additional data to it and providing further color, insights, and value. The third aspect is Power BI. Here you can actually take all that data you've got packaged up in your dataverse and that has been entered by your users and then use Power BI to bring it all together and tell a coherent story around that data and customize that story to the needs of different audiences. And that's, you know, right back to those soft skills we talked about, too, because once you have that great Power BI, telling the story, help using that data to tell the story of impact, I think, is another critical skill for any citizen data scientist to have. You've built a lot of apps over the last several years that we've worked together. I'm curious to hear from you. What's your favorite feature of the Power Platform and how have you been using it to improve the solutions that you build on behalf of the team? There isn't one feature that I would say is my favorite. There's a general principle around the Power Platform that uh, I find just so hugely valuable, and that is the configurability of the solution. And because of that, what you can actually do is you can just try something very simply and quickly and get it in front of your users. And that is where a lot of where the power actually lies. It is very simple and easy, even potentially in a virtually a real-time meeting, to sit down with your users and just try stuff. And, you know, sometimes people don't know what they want uh, 100% until they actually see it and can interact with it. That's great. And so, you know, maybe the flip side to that question is that it's not always, you know, sunshine and rainbows either. What are some of the pain points that you've encountered as a citizen developer? And how did you go about overcoming them? Yeah, there's there's a few pain points out there that you, you learn on the journey around citizen development. Uh, a couple I would call out, and it's about slowing down as a theme. So one thing you've got to be careful of is under Power Platform, you can get very involved and build something very quickly. But what you need to do is actually slow down, make sure you understand the full ecosystem, both in terms of all the stakeholders, the users, and the business requirements. You may find initially you're dealing with a subset of those. So you may actually build a solution that works really well for them. But as that begins to get traction and other people get interested, those further stakeholders that were in that ecosystem come into play. And then you maybe find, oh, the, in the wider context, things needed to be slightly different to deliver value for everyone. And then you may get in a slight rework cycle. So slow down, take that time to understand that full ecosystem as I said, and go from there. Probably good advice for all of us in the technology sector sometimes just to slow down in order to help us to speed up. Yeah. And the second one is around slowing down and just bring people on the journey with you. Quite often with Power Platform, there's huge capabilities there and you can tweak and change things. But what you need to do is actually make sure people 
are on the journey, they understand why things are being done, when changes are coming, and what's in it for them in terms of those changes and how they can leverage those changes and get the value that is clear in your head, but you've got to make sure it's clear in everyone's head, otherwise you won't realise that value. Yeah, well, answering that question, what's in it for me, is one of those key questions whenever we're doing change management uh, at Microsoft. Okay, Steve, thank you for that. I just have one last question for you. As you reflect back on your journey, what's one thing that you wished you knew at the beginning of your career as a citizen developer that you know now? And do you have any other final tips for prospective citizen devs out there? Uh, the one thing I wished when I started was uh, being a citizen developer is a part-time role. So, and a lot around Power Platform is use it or lose it. And because you're sort of in this part-time semi-developer role, you might learn something and use it. And then you may never use it again till six, 12, 18 months later. But if you actually took the time to, like, again, slow down and write it down, I'm not talking about documentation here, it's just notes for yourself. Um, open up a OneNote, a Word document or something, and just write up one or two lines about what you were doing, and then maybe write down how you solved that problem and copy and paste in the code. And just put that in one location because in 12 months' time when you come and you, you need to do something similar, you'll remember the fact that you did this, but you can't remember entirely where or you waste a lot of time digging around and finding that, and then when you find that, you're away. So just keep that one place where, as you learn, store up your knowledge um, and also share it with others. So it sounds to me like those tips would be to communicate, slow down, and that allows you to innovate. So, Steve, thanks again for joining me today. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to share what I've learned, and good luck on your journey with Power Platform. <laughs>